Imagine being the most powerful woman in a country, living in a lavish palace, surrounded by jewels and luxury. Imagine being loved by your husband, the king, and adored by your people. Imagine having everything you ever wanted and then losing it all in a matter of months. This is the tragic story of Farah Pahlavi, the last empress of Iran. Farah Pahlavi was born in 1938 in Tehran to an upper-class family. Her father was an officer in the Iranian army, and her mother was a descendant of a noble family from the Caspian Sea. Farah was an only child and grew up in a happy and comfortable home. She was intelligent, beautiful, and ambitious. She dreamed of becoming an architect and studied in Paris, where she was exposed to the culture and art of the West. In 1959, when she was 21 years old, she met Mohammad Reza Pahlavi, the Shah of Iran. He was 40 years old, handsome, charming, and powerful. He had been married twice before, but had no sons to inherit his throne. He was looking for a young and fertile bride who could give him an heir. He saw Farah at the Iranian embassy in Paris and was instantly smitten by her beauty and grace. He proposed to her after only three days of courtship, and she accepted. They married in a grand ceremony in Tehran, attended by thousands of guests from around the world. Farah became the queen of Iran, and soon after, the empress, or Shahbanu, when her husband crowned himself as the king of kings. She gave birth to four children, Reza, Farah Naz, Ali Reza, and Layla. She was the perfect partner for the Shah, loyal, supportive, elegant, and glamorous. She accompanied him on his travels, hosted dignitaries and celebrities at their palace, and participated in his reforms and projects. She also pursued her own interests. She founded Iran's first American-style university, supported women's rights and education, promoted Iranian culture and art, and collected precious antiques and jewels. Farah Pahlavi seemed to have it all. A loving family, a powerful position, a wealthy lifestyle, and a popular image. She was called the Light of Iran, the Rose of Persia, and the Jackie Kennedy of the Middle East. She was admired by many people around the world for her beauty, style, and charisma. She was living a fairy tale. But behind the scenes, things were not so rosy. Iran was a country of contrasts, modern and traditional, rich and poor, secular and religious. The Shah's rule was authoritarian and oppressive. He banned political parties, censored the media, jailed dissidents, tortured opponents, and corrupted officials. He also alienated many Iranians by his close ties with the United States and Israel, his lavish spending on weapons and celebrations, his westernization of society, and his disregard for Islam. By the late 1970s, Iran was boiling with discontent and resentment. A revolution was brewing among various groups, communists, socialists, nationalists, Islamists, students, workers, merchants, clerics. They all wanted to overthrow the Shah and establish a new system based on democracy or religion. The revolution erupted in 1978 with massive protests across the country. The Shah's army tried to suppress them with violence, but failed to stop them. The Shah's allies abandoned him one by one. The Shah himself became ill with cancer, but hid it from everyone. He realized that he had lost control of his country, but did not know what to do. Farah Pahlavi stood by her husband's side until the end. She tried to persuade him to make concessions to the opposition, but he refused. She tried to comfort him in his pain, but he became depressed. She tried to protect their children from the chaos, but they were terrified. In January 1979, assistant, they had no choice but to leave Iran forever. They boarded a plane with their belongings and flew into exile. They hoped to find refuge in friendly countries, but they were rejected by most of them. They wandered from Egypt to Morocco to Bahamas to Mexico to Panama to Egypt again. They lived in fear of assassination attempts by Iranian agents or angry mobs. They lived in sorrow for losing their homeland and their throne. They lived in isolation from their friends and relatives who had either fled or been killed or imprisoned. 
The Shah died in July 1980 in Cairo after undergoing several surgeries for his cancer. He was buried in a mosque near the Nile River. Farah Pahlavi became a widow at 41 years old. She was left alone with her four children and her memories. She moved to Paris, where she still lives today. She has devoted her life to charity work, cultural activities, and writing books. She has also maintained contact with her loyal supporters and followers, who still regard her as their empress. She has never returned to Iran, where the Islamic Republic that replaced the monarchy has denounced her as a traitor and a criminal. She has never seen her homeland again, where the palace that was once her home is now a museum of the revolution. Farah Pahlavi is the last empress of Iran. She is a woman who had everything and lost everything. She is a woman who lived a fairy tale and a nightmare. She is a woman who survived tragedy and triumphed over adversity. I hope you enjoyed this video about the story of Empress Pahlavi of Iran. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe to Luxury Freaks for more videos like this. I would love to hear your opinions and suggestions for the next video. Thank you for watching and see you next time on Luxury Freaks.